Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample 46. This one is birch ply on Nomex core sheathed with an acrylic fabric called Dynel in epoxy. And then one side gets fared up and primed. Here's a look at the materials, the laminate schedule, and a weight estimate. Here are the pieces. So this birch ply is 1 16th inch thick and I bought a one foot by two foot piece so I have exactly zero extra and I'm gonna have to make sure this core which is 15 millimeter Nomex Kevlar like honeycomb paper that's glued together to make a honeycomb core and this is available usually used for pretty high-end high-performance things uh, but you can buy it surplus and um, usually for pretty reasonable and it's very lightweight very stiff and pretty impressive stuff so the adhesive I'm using here to glue this birch ply is Gorilla Glue, which is a woodworking glue of polyurethane. And I'm applying what will turn out to be not quite enough of it onto this plywood and working it in with a squeegee. The reason I'm using this is because I wanted to see how it works. And um, it's significantly lighter and it foams up in contact with water. So I'm laying these out, I'm making sure to align the outer veneers of the plywood, which I'll call the zero direction, with the ribbon of the honeycomb. And when the honeycomb is made of stacked layers of paper, there's one direction that's got the, the long axis of the cells, and that's the direction that the paper strips run. You can see I'm peeling it off here, and that is the stiffer, stronger, better shear properties direction of that core. So lining that edge up and the bottom edge up with the plywood and dabbing it with just a very damp, very lightly damped cloth to add a little moisture. That is what lets the Gorilla Glue cure. So I've got those all lined up and I'm just putting a piece of plastic there and then weighing it down with this little surface plate which is pretty heavy. I'm not worried about the Gorilla Glue expanding and bowing up the part because the excess will run into the cells on the honeycomb. Now that it's cured up, I'm going to remove that little heavy surface plate and have a look at what I got. You see the excess Nomex sticking off around the edge on two sides. I'm just going to shear that off with a razor knife. It cuts really well. It's just resin coated paper and having a look at the edge it all looks really tight. It's a little bit of extra Gorilla Glue on the faces of the ply and I'm gonna come back and sand that off. So without any sheathing it's ten and a half ounces and I'm gonna give it a sand with some 120 grit just to keep things tidy. This is the Dynel fabric. It is an acrylic woven material and it's very tough sort of like Kevlar but not so much and uh, very drapeable abrasion resistant it's uh, used on the decks of boats sometimes over plywood to protect the plywood and provide a stable substrate for paint it's got these wrinkles in it but those will smooth right out the epoxy here is West 105 205 the, the fast mix and on this first side, I'm wetting out the plywood. And on the other side, I will just wet through the Dynel. So I've spread it out here. I'm going to put some resin on top too and wet that through. It takes a fair bit of resin. And the Dynel does tend to float in the resin because it's so much lighter than the equivalent fiberglass. But part of the nice thing here is that fiberglass has a relatively low elongation and so if you were to bend this or put under load it would absorb all of the, the stress before the plywood would get a chance really to, to participate. So here I'm putting some Copaflex which is just a combined peel ply release film and breather on one side and but this is going to be envelope bag that is the bag is going to enclose the entire panel and bag both skins on at the same time. 
So that's why I flipped it over. And I'm going to do the same thing wetting through here. You can see just pour the resin on top and Dynel wets very easily. It does take a little bit of time, but with a squeegee and uh, or a roller, you can really get the resin through there nicely. Here is the other piece on this side of the Compaflex. And I've left that little tail so I can put the um, vacuum connector away from the resin. You wouldn't have to do it on something like this. I just didn't want to leave print on either the surfaces or risk sucking resin into the vacuum pump. To make this envelope bag, I put sealant tape around three sides, just a little past the fold. And so I flopped one half over onto the bottom piece. And you can see I considered putting it the hose through the folded over piece, but the way I've got this set up, I just added a little bit and made a pleat so that it lands on that extra tab sticking out from the side of the panel. So I go around and seal this all up. And now in a vacuum bag, it will compress it from both sides and evenly compact this onto the surface. I'll just make sure there aren't any wrinkles here. It will fold the material over into the edge of the honeycomb. Uh, something that if you're making a big panel, you could make it a little bigger uh, or hold it back from the edge a little bit. But here it's not a big deal. After that cured, came back with a little bit of two-part epoxy fairing compound. This is a Total Boat product. And it's mixed one-to-one -one and turns this green color. This is pretty old material. It has a little, a little bit chunky. But it's a really nice way to do fairing because it saves you mixing the fillers and having the variable viscosity of the mix with different batches. Here, after I remembered to turn the vacuum on, I'm sanding this fairing compound down with a little bit of 80 grit just until a tiny bit of Dynel shows through. And I'm giving it a couple coats of this All Grip 545 primer, which is a two part epoxy. And then come back and clean up the edges and sand that surface smooth. Here, I think with some 220, just enough to um, make it nice and flat. And if I were going to paint this with a two part paint or really anything, I just need to work this to a very nice surface, probably apply another round of primer to make it very nice, fill any pinholes. I just wanted to, to show how to build out a, a surface that you could work to paint from. And this Dynel is very tough. It doesn't like to cut, it doesn't like to abrade or tear. And compared to glass, it's a real challenge to get cleaned up. And a really nice way to manage Dynel is to green trim it, which is to cut with a razor knife when it is not, the epoxy is not fully cured. So if you have a panel, you let it run past the edge. But of course, if you're vacuum bagging, that would mean you'd have to pull the bag off at just the right time and sort of cut away the excess. But here, I sanded it away. Um, the nice thing is the dust isn't itchy. It's um, you know pretty easy stuff to deal with from a comfort perspective, but still a hassle to uh, tidy up. So I'll just go back over, I think, uh, finish off that, clean up the edges, and... Um, Give it a little uh, wipe. The weight here is 15 and an eighth ounces and 427 grams. And it turned out about 0.775 or 19.7 millimeters thick. Here's a look at the panel, all trimmed up and wiped down the primed side and the raw Dynel side. The vacuum bag really compacts the resin out of the Dynel. It makes a very nice surface. Typically, this is used without a vacuum bag in a sheathing. But if you have building panels and have the opportunity to bag it, it's a really great way to, to get the weight down and to keep it from floating. So I just wanted to show a combination of the ply, the Nomex, and also the Dynel sheathing, which compared to glass allows the, the plywood to be more structural. So here is a look at what you could do to an edge if you didn't want to have exposed honeycomb. This is very common for honeycomb panels to what's called backfill an edge. And here I've just rebated the 
Nomex away with a table saw, leaving the skins intact. And I'm putting some thickened epoxy in there. This is thickened with red phenolic micro balloons and pushing it in there with a little stick. This is just liquid enough that it flows in pretty well. I will end up with some voids and giving it a quick heat gun is a good way to help get rid of those. Here it is cured. See the little bubbles in there. Those could be filled, but it's just a nice way to finish the edge. So as a look at a couple of interesting materials playing together, uh, thank you for checking it out.